Hey guys, today I'm getting started on my Sketchbox June challenge. This month I received the basic box and the premium box and um, the goodies inside were pan pastels and the sort of materials you would use with them. So I am working on a cold press watercolor paper. It's the same paper I used in my demonstration and I thought I would draw a um, I would draw a Cyclops girl today because I mean I like Cyclops girls and they used to be more prevalent in my art and I'd like to bring them back so I'm gonna start out with doing a sketch and then I'm gonna ink it and it may take a little while between uh, when I ink it and when I get to color it since I'm gonna be out of town for a little while but you guys won't notice because it'll all be edited together so I'm going to start out with um just some constructive anatomy just sort of um usually i would start out with a thumbnail but i have kind of a, a fresh idea or an idea not really a fresh one if i draw cyclops cyclops is all that much it's not all that fresh um but i have an idea so i wanted to go ahead and get it underway And I wanted to draw it for you guys, because usually when I start with these challenge videos, um, I have already sketched what I'm going to draw, so... All right, so I'm gonna start inking and I think I'm gonna use the pit pen to do it since it has a finer tip. It's been a long time since I've inked with a pit pen. And I think I also want to remove this from the pad it's on. Hmm, you know what, I think I'm actually gonna use scissors on this because this is pretty sturdy paper. All right, so I'm gonna ink it and then I think I'll trim it down. And I guess since I've already removed it from the, uh, the 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 notebook that if this turns out okay i think i'll offer her for sale and for those of you who are curious this pit pin came in my premium box
like this um, watercolor paper will chew up your pit pins tip. I don't know if I can get it to focus. It'll chew it up really quickly, making it very, very difficult to do fine lines. And you can see sort of towards the end of her hair where that really became an issue. Um, I would have liked to have gone in and done some finer lines just to sort of add add some volume and body to her hair. But I'm afraid they just wouldn't be very fine because I think the paper is chewing up the tip of my pencil. Now, you do want a textured paper when you're using pastels because the textured paper will grip onto it. And early on when I was doing the line art, I found a mistake. Um, some of the brown from a previous page had gotten onto this page. So I just used a Tombow Mono Sand Eraser to sort of pick that up and it did a great job. So I'm gonna be using that in the challenge. So I wanna allow my ink to cure. So I'm gonna give it a day and then I'm gonna come back and erase the line art. So I'll see you guys later. Hey guys, today I'm going to do my June Sketchbox Challenge using materials from both the basic and the premium box. And this month, our boxes had pan pastels. The basic box got this little two-piece set. The premium box got a much larger set. So I'm gonna go ahead and get set up. Now, if you're interested in seeing the overview, um, please check out this video here. And uh, if you'd like to see the unboxing, I recommend you check out my Sketchbox um, playlist because I have all of the videos for all of the Sketchbox I've done so far, so starting in January, um, on that playlist. And if you're interested in my thoughts on Sketchbox as opposed to Art Snacks, I recommend you check out my Sketch Art Snacks versus Sketchbox playlist, which I can link right there. Um, so I have this little illustration of a Cyclops girl that I did on Winsor & Newton cold press watercolor paper because it has a fair amount of tooth. And I inked it using the pit brush pen that came in my premium box. The basic box had a Le Pen pigment pen, which I will explore at a later date. I'm also bringing to the table a mono sand eraser, which came in one of my previous Art Snacks boxes. These are good for picking up your pastel. Um, a couple of hard chalk pastels that I got in an Art Snacks a while back and never used. A Prismacolor red color pencil. And these were actually from the two different boxes this month, as well as some makeup blending sponges in addition to the soft sponges that were included in my box. So one of the first things I want to do, other than erase all of the pencil cleanly from this watercolor paper, is I want to go ahead and add some red highlights or accents to her cheeks and to her lips. And I'm not sure how well this is gonna turn out, honestly, because I don't normally do pastel. So this is kind of an adventure for me. But I was thinking I could do very soft details um, and then, well, we'll see. We'll find out together, right? So I want to, I want to do sort of like an overall wash of color. And I think I want to use the soft passive, pa these things, the tools to, to do so. So I'm going to start with the turquoise that was included.
It's driving me crazy to get my hands this messy. Okay, so it looks like you can pick some, but not a lot of harder pastels up. And it doesn't look like it wants to transfer at all. So it looks like I'll be doing this by hand and making a huge mess. And these are some of the, I've had these for a while. These are chalk pastels that were included in an Art Snacks many, many moons ago. And I'm introducing them mostly because I don't have a huge collection of pastels to work with. So I sort of have to work with what I have. Not getting very good coverage. Let's see if I can't use something to sort of blend that in. A little bit at least. I'll zoom in for you guys so you can see better what I'm doing. And I'm, now it's like removing a lot of it from the paper. That wasn't what I was trying to do. I was just trying to, to blend it. And with pan pastels, I'm pretty sure you're supposed to work in larger pieces, do larger things. I think you guys have figured out by now, I don't really like to work large. I like to work small and detailed. Uh, and I also have a time constraint. I am leaving to go back to Louisiana tomorrow. So I wanted to get as many videos in pre-production as I could get them on the pipeline. Especially since my editor has been so sick lately. And I should point out that <laughs> my sketchbox cards came with zero instructions on how to do this. No help at all. So I'm sure some of you in the audience are, you know, wincing pretty hard at how I'm handling my pastels. And I'm sorry. Uh, I really don't have too much of a clue when it comes to pastels. Pastels are definitely not my medium. I think I used them a little bit when I was in elementary school and then I was like, I don't like having my hands dirty all the time. And I switched to mediums that are less likely to transfer schmutz all over the place.
having a little bit of trouble getting the colors to blend. And I don't know if it's because there's just not really enough tooth on the paper. So that's not going to happen anyway. Or if it's my technique or what, like maybe I need to go spray some spray mat on this to give it like a new surface. I don't know. I just don't have enough experience with um, these sort of tools to really be able to tell what I need to do <laughs> at what stage. Kind of just meandering along, trying to figure things out as I go, which is, I know, I know that's why some of you guys watch this channel <laughs> is to watch me, you know, kind of flounder around for a while as I figure things out. So I hope, I hope that is, this is satisfying to you because I don't mind doing it. I just. Hope I'm not killing some of you in the process while I figure things out. And I wanted to go with a high contrast color on the flower centers. All right, I have some spray fixative. So I think I'm going to go apply that. I know I need to do something with her ribbon back there and none of these colors really speak to me for that. So I think I'll spray it and I'll figure that out. So I'll be right back. Okay, so spray matte or spray fixative means that I can't go back and rework any of these layers. The eraser won't erase. I can't blend any of the colors back. But that also gives me a chance to work over it and add details, hopefully, in theory, add details that I've kind of lost. And it also gives the paper a little bit of a new tooth once it's dry. And you want to give it plenty of time to dry because if you try to work it before it's dry, it's going to get gummy and weird and it's just going to make a big mess. And spray fixative isn't necessarily the solution for everyone either. It tends to be what I run and grab with the uh, like pigment, heavy pigment based media that I'm just not that familiar with. I mean, I also work in general, I like to work in a lot of layers. So um, it does give me a chance to put down some more layers. And if you are going to use spray mat, you really want to do so in a well ventilated area. Go outside, crack open a window, especially if you have kids or pets. It's one thing if you are by yourself and you choose to make a poor decision. It's another thing when you inflict that poor decision on an animal or a kid. And I'm wiping the excess pigment off on a paper towel. So, I mean, that's what the instructions said. I did, I did do a little research. I did read the instructions. I did look them up, watch a couple videos. Um, so, while I am not prepared to give you guys any advice whatsoever on how to do this, because I am not super confident myself, I do know the basics of handling the materials and 
the sketch box did include two instruction booklets total, one per box. Um, that's more on Pan Pastel providing them though than on um, Sketchbox, I believe. All right, I'm gonna go spray this and then it's time to start adding some of the finer details, I think. All right, guys, we're sort of in the stretch here. Um, I am mostly going to be messing around with the, probably just the white, um, because black tends to make, with pastels and color pencils, that sort of stuff, black tends to make things look dirty. So I think I might just stick with the white. And because it's a pastel, there are there is some blending, even though I sprayed it going on, which is interesting. Might make this more difficult than I initially intended. Also interesting is that it picks up the red color pencil. They must have something, some some blender or binders in common. I am a bit more familiar with pastel pencils than I am with pastels. They are harder and chalkier and they're less prone to making a mess. So they're definitely a medium that's like in the Becca Hilburn alley of acceptable mediums. But they're also really useful for adding fine details to um, larger pastel pieces. So like if you used your pan pastels and you 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 fixed your, your Dang it, I'm just like blundering all over myself today. If you spray matted or fixed, use a fixative on your softer pastels, you could then go over these and add very sharp details. If you didn't um, fix them first, you could go over with these and add sort of um, blended details. And since I did spray fixative on my, this little piece, I'm getting some pretty sharp details, which I'm happy with. Cause that's what I wanted. One of the, one of the, the sort of styles or techniques I'm quickly becoming very fond of is sort of like hazy illustration. You may have seen this with my alcohol inks or some of my watercolors and then adding a few sharp details here and there to sort of pull things out from the haze. And for those of you who are ready to check your phone, I'm sorry, that one's mine. Okay. So I think, I think she turned out pretty dang cute. I'm, I'm pretty pleased so far with her. Um, I might end up just calling it quits. What's sad is I know they included the pan pastels to like help promote them. And the pan pastels are great. But for me, I'm like more excited right now with like the pencil uh, pastels. And I'm like, oh yeah, I forgot I liked working with these. They're like working with color pencil, except, you know, easier and a little smoother and you can blend them a little bit better.
all right. Keep saying that. And then I'm like, let me just do this one other thing. That's the first time in a little while, though, that I liked um, something that I did with the materials from Sketchbox. So I want to pop the highlights in our eyes just a little bit more. And that means I need to do another layer of spray and then add on top of that. So I'm going to go spray it and I'll be right back. All right, guys, for realsies and for truesies, we're in the home stretch because I pretty much just want to add a few very white pops. Which doesn't seem to want to happen. I might have to switch media. Maybe I should just take it as it is and be happy with what I've got. But I mean, really, in all the time you guys have known me, when have I ever done that? Still, it's pretty cute as it is. And I do have a bad habit of accidentally ruining things by overworking them. I do have other things to do today. So I think I'll call it the end finished on my June Sketchbox basic and premium box challenge, which featured pan pastels, but I also brought in a few other mediums. I'm Becca Hilburn. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, remember to leave a like and consider subscribing to my channel for even more great content. Um, shoot. I was, oh yeah. Huh. Uh, if you enjoy content like this and you'd like to help me create more, please check out my Patreon at patreon.com slash natosoup. And, um, if you enjoy content like this and you want lots more of it right now, I recommend you check out my blog, natasoup.blogspot.com, which has seven years of all sorts of goodies, ranging from art school advice, me sharing my experiences at SCAD, me showing you guys how to prepare for cons, how to put together tutorials, um, reviewing art supplies, demonstrating art supplies, providing tutorials. It's a great resource. I really recommend you check it out. So I will see you guys later with my art snacks videos. I hope you guys have a good week. Bye.